Dive headfirst into the unknown because that's where the magic happens. Fear? It's just a sign that you're onto something big. So flip the script, embrace it, and watch as it transforms into your fuel for greatness. This is your moment to break free from the chains of doubt and start living your truth. Don't just exist, thrive. Let's crush those fears and start anything together. You keep on failing forward, so why wouldn't you want to do it? I say start. I say start. You've got nothing to lose. You're already miserable not achieving what you need to achieve. You're already miserable not, you know, going for your goals and your dreams. So try it. Start. And I think most of the time it's not even about the destination. It's about the journey. You know, when you keep on trying and doing something and building something, the person that you become during that process is what's powerful. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about the fear of starting. Um, first of all, I think we need to understand what fear is and what fear is brought on by. So fear for me is a spirit, according to what the Bible says. It is a spirit that has not come from us. It doesn't come from us. It's not something that it's inherent with us. It's not something that you are born with. It's something that attaches itself to you as you experience life. And it is brought on by your responses to what happens to you in life. If you think about a baby, a baby is very explorative. And it's explorative because it has no knowledge of anything that could endanger it. It doesn't even understand the word danger. So when a baby is exploring things, only after, let's say, maybe there's something that is hot, maybe a heater down there, and they touch the heater, and then they feel the heat or the burn. Only then they respond to this, oh, this thing really hurts. Even though they don't understand the word danger, now they are in touch with what the concept of danger is. So if you think about it, we were not given the spirit of fear. It is something that attaches itself to us in response to what we have experienced. So now, if we come back to adulthood, now we are adults. And what notions in our heads have given us the spirit of fear? What did we experience? And then our response was to fear it. If we can approach fear from that direction, understanding that this is not something that it is inherently from us or is we are born with or it's part of our DNA then we understand we can actually work at detaching ourselves from it now then ask yourself why am I so fearful of starting so now we're gonna use the same principle and the same concept I explained in the analogy of the baby what have you experienced that made your response see starting something that is big and huge as something to be feared. You have experienced trying something and then failed at it. And because the feeling of failure felt like pain, the same pain that the child felt, you thought, oh my gosh, there's danger in trying something new or something that I've never done before. So now you attach starting anything that is significant with that fear. Now, how do we detach ourselves from the fear especially when it comes to starting there are formulas that i use in order to try and detach myself from the fear for instance there's a business concept that i had and i wanted to start it and because i had started so many other concepts and they failed and that sort of like bruised me you know what i mean like oh my gosh that means maybe i'm not worthy of doing it or you know i'm incapable of doing it or maybe this is not for me or it's for someone else and not necessarily me so i attached all of those things and now that kept on fueling the fear so now the thought is how can i detach myself from that type of thinking so i thought to myself firstly in life no one has lived this life before so anything that i do 
I have never ever done it before. It's, it's, it's sort of like starting a new job. It doesn't matter what qualification you have. When you get into that job, it is tailor-made. There's a certain work way that that company needs. So you've never done it before. That certain systems that they use that you probably didn't use in varsity or your previous job. So that means it becomes new. There's certain ways of working that they implement that you didn't do prior. So that means that is new. There's a certain way reports are created that you've never done. So everything is new. Everything is new. Everyone is experiencing newness. Now think of a very successful artist who's done great things, like for instance, Michael Jackson. When Michael Jackson got into the music industry, he had never done it before. On top of that, he got into it when he was a child. He had never done that before. Every milestone, every step, every level that he kept on going up into, it was the first time he was experiencing it. So we are all experiencing new things. I think though the secret that I've noticed is that people of that success or who reach those volumes of success is every time they fail, they don't get discouraged. I feel like they think to themselves, okay, that formula didn't work, so let me try another formula. So I started applying the same thing, like, you know, I'm trying something new and if this doesn't work, okay, maybe let me try and have a moment, give myself space to sit down and think what could be the solution for whatever this blockage is. Like I've now come across a limitation. How do I work around the limitation? Or if I do something and it's not successful, then I say to myself, okay, that means this formula that I used is not successful. Let me try another formula. Then I keep on moving. I think the one thing that we overlook is to just take time and give yourself the space to innovate and find a solution for your apparent problem. If you just gave yourself the space and time to get a solution, you would see yourself move forward. If you struggle and the solution can't come from you, inquire from others. Ask your mentor or someone who's farther along from you or even other people around you. See how other people who experience the same problem dealt with it. Give yourself the space. Just don't give up. The fact that you think you need to do something once and then it must just blow up, I think is what's killing us, to be honest with you. That's what's killing us. We are thinking, it's just like I always tell my friends every time they say, oh my gosh, they beat themselves up and regret um, an action and they're like, oh my gosh, why did I do that? I'm like, first of all, you are basically saying you are righteous, you are perfect, you should know everything, but you don't. We are all doing this human thing for the first time. We're having this human experience for the first time. And every time you wake up, you're experiencing a new day for the first time. So why would you think that you wouldn't make that mistake? Stop being hard on yourself or stop having the spirit of self-righteousness like I was supposed to know better. How were you supposed to know better? Who taught you better? Because this was the lesson and the experience you needed to know what is better. So it's the same thing with starting something. Why do you think you must just be born when you're out of your mother's womb and then you're an expert? I kept on asking myself these questions like, why do I want to be an expert on something I've never experienced before? If I haven't experienced before, my experience will be this thing that I might just fail in or, you know, find out that there's a different way of achieving it. So those are one of the, the lessons that I picked up in order to say to myself, okay, so I'm going to start something that is new, that has never been done before. Even when I ask around, like no one knows what I'm trying to do. So I might as well go at it, try, fail, keep on getting up, finding other solutions in order to move forward. So the fear comes from there. The fear is that you think you're supposed to get something once off. And if you don't get it, that means you are incompetent. So you fear incompetency. That can't be true if you don't know something or you've never learned it before. Think about it. The other thing is the pain of failure. You have experienced something that you wanted so badly and it didn't work out and you remember that pain. And that pain actually left a trauma in you. But the way you deal with traumas is reframing things. So now, if you, this is how I thought about it. This is how I tried to apply it to my life. 
So I want to do something and I'm not doing it. There's a pain there. There's a pain of not achieving your goals, of not doing great things, of not fulfilling your purpose. I think everyone knows that pain because God created us with a need to fulfill a purpose that is bigger than our everyday lives. So now I'm experiencing that pain of, oh my gosh, I'm hating this. Why didn't I start? Why didn't I do this? There's this regret attached to it. Then there's a pain of failure. Reframe it. Everything is going to be hard and everything is going to be painful. Which pain do you want to feel? Do you want to feel the pain of failing but you are actually able to move forward? Or the pain of stagnancy and regrets where you're not doing anything, you're not starting, you're not achieving anything, you're not feeling great, you're not giving value in life and you, you, you just feel that pain of regret and the hardship of not moving forward and feeling like your life is meaningless. Reframe it. So life is going to be hard, life is going to have pains choose your pain what i thought to myself is i would rather have the pain of experiencing small lessons because now i've reframed pain from pain to lessons small lessons where i'm like okay that didn't work but i'm gonna move forward and try something else and i keep on moving forward and i keep on moving forward so i've reframed it completely and i'm like i'm gonna sit around and regret the fact that i did not do the things that i wanted to do or give value or achieve or live out my purpose I would rather try things and every time something doesn't work, I'm like, okay, let me tweak it. And you know what's even nice about failing forward? Every time you get something wrong, it's a lesson. Ding! Every time you do something wrong, it's a lesson. Okay, so this is not the way to do it. How do I refine it so that I can get to where I need to get to? Like, it's all about reframing. So tell yourself, but I am gonna fail because I've never done this before. And there is gonna be that pain and that trauma but that pain is not gonna kill me. Think about it. Who has ever died from disappointments? Who has ever died from disappointment? You're not gonna die from a disappointment. And the nice thing about disappointment is that they're not permanent. You're disappointed now, you move on. Think about even a breakup. Someone disappoints you, you thought you were building a nice relationship, someone disappoints you, you get hurt. And that hurt is heavy and it's deep. And sometimes it even feels like you're gonna die. Then lo and behold, a few months later, you meet someone else who actually now even suits you and even treats you better and understands you better. And you know, you're a better match than what you thought you wanted. You've moved, you've learned. It's okay, going forward, when someone behaves in this certain way, but we are both trying to build a relationship, I shouldn't be going with that person because I can see where it's going to end. So now this is what I see. I see this type of person behaving this way, treating me this way. That means they want to invest. And this is someone who is highly likely not to disappoint me even though people disappoint because we are human beings but you get what i'm saying the concept is you keep on failing forward so why wouldn't you want to do it i say start i say start you've got nothing to lose you're already miserable not achieving what you need to achieve you're already miserable not you know going for your goals and your dreams so try it start and i think most of the time it's not even about the destination it's about the journey you know when you keep on trying and doing something and building something the person that you become during that process is what's powerful that is the most powerful thing how you feel about it you are now in the space that you're supposed to be in you're now in your lane it makes you happy whether you've got the money or not whether you've got the success or not whether you've got you know the fame or not it makes you happy because that's what you were built to do think about it just reframe that pain reframe it all together going back to my analogy the baby doesn't stop exploring just because they got burnt touching the heater now they know okay i'm not supposed to move that direction now i can go to the table because i once touched the table and the table didn't bring me pain so now i can explore with what the table is it not fascinating that jesus says in the bible the people who are going to make it to heaven are the people who are childlike you have to be childlike in order to make it to heaven because you're not holding on to things you're not letting your traumas attach themselves to you and even if you have a trauma you work on it even if you fail you don't take it to heart and put it in your heart and then make it grow big and let that define you like a child you get hurt now a person says i'm sorry baby i hurt you and you're like okay and then you carry on playing people like that christ says are going to make it to heaven so don't you think that's the same spirit we need to use to attack things here on earth to attack our dreams to live life think about it the last thing that i want to share if you want some more like let me know 
because I can go on for days about fear. Like I have literally, I feel like I've been workshopping myself to get to a, the, the second level of what I can offer in life. The other thing about fear, if you want to cancel fear out of your life, you need to counter it with faith. Now let's talk about what faith is. Faith is a substance of things not seen, things you haven't done before, things you haven't seen with your name. Unfortunately, beloveds, my battery died. And I think I should actually end it here because it's becoming a bit too long. But if you found value and would like to hear more, please let me know in the comments below and I will do a part two. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and let's build this community. And you can also find me on Instagram. My handle is Zoe on Life. See you next week.